All over the world, children are celebrating their mothers. We celebrate Mother's Day and we are grateful for our mothers that brought us up and they fed us and they cleaned us and they cooked for us and they loved us. Uh, so, mothers, may you enjoy this day. But also in our hearts, we are grateful it's a gift from God. We always want to preach a Christ-centered sermon. We always want to have the focus on Christ. Because, because Christ is the one that has reconciled us to God the Father. And then He lived His life as an example to us. And He also died on the cross to save us, but also left us the gift of the Holy Spirit. So in everything, we always stay focused on Christ Jesus and we are grateful for godly mothers as well. Today, I want to speak about the promise that God hears our prayers. When we call on Him, that He hears our prayers. There are many stories in the Bible where we read where people were praying, asking God for help and where God helped. Uh, you and I both have many stories to tell of uh, situations in our lives where we called on the Lord and God heard our prayers. And even before we started praying, God was even aware of all those prayers. Read with me in Psalm 145, verse 18 to 19, what David writes here. It says, The Lord is near to all who call on Him, to all who call on Him in truth. He fulfills the desire of those who fear Him. He also hears their cry and saves them. In the New Testament, Romans 10 verse 13 says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I remember the day in my life where I cried out to Christ. I made Him the Lord of my life. He saved me. I know the stories of my parents where they told me, where they cried out to the Lord and they were saved. And I see the goodness of God in their lives. Everything in scripture is to the benefit of the believer. Is to the benefit of those who obey his commands. There are some examples of parents in the Bible who were godly parents and that we read about. Now, the first one I want to point to is Joseph. He's a parent of Jesus, but he's not his own biological parent. Imagine your fiancé comes to you and says, I'm pregnant. And you know it's not your child. And she says to you, listen, this child is not of man, but it's of God. You would think she's crazy and she's nuts. But Joseph stuck with her. Joseph brought up the Son of God here on earth. He was an example to him. And I'm sure Joseph uh, taught him about the Lord, taught him about uh, the Bible when he was still a young boy. And he was an example to the son of his. We also read the story in Timothy. Uh, Paul writes to Timothy in the Bible. And he commends his parents. He writes the following in 2 Timothy 1 verse 5. In the ESV it says, I am reminded of your sincere faith. He's speaking to Timothy. A faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois. And in your mother Eunice. And now I am sure dwells in you as well. Timothy had godly. He had a godly mother. He had a godly grandmother. And I'm sure they cried out to the Lord. They taught him. But I'm sure they also prayed to the Lord. Lord would you save Timothy? Lord would you change his life? And eventually he becomes one of the leaders in Paul's uh, ministry and in the story of the Bible. God hears their prayers. But there's another story and I want to focus on this story today of a mother. Her name was Hannah, a woman who couldn't bear children. A woman who felt that God has closed up her womb and she couldn't have children. And we read the story in the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1. We're going to re read some portions in this scripture. And we see here where she is taunted. Her husband had two wives. Now, this is not 
uh, what God wants, uh, although he did permit it. So she was caught between her husband and her husband's second wife, Penina. And, and Penina had many children. And she was taunting her and this adversity, adversity between her and Penina. And we read the story where she cried out to the Lord. Today, we want to say that when you cry out to the, to the Lord, He hears your prayers. He hears when you cry out, even before you start. But let's see what lessons we can learn from this passage in Scripture. Let's read in 1 Samuel 1, verse 1 to 6. There was a certain man of Ramathim Zophim, of the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, the son of Jehoram. He had two wives. The name of the one was Hannah, and the name of the other Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Now this man used to go up year by year from his city to worship and to sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, where the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were priests of the Lord. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to Penina his wife and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion, because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. He loved his wife Hannah in spite of her not having children. She's distraught. She's distressed. Penina had many sons. He gave them all a portion. But to Hannah, he gave a double portion. Now let's read on verse 8 to 12. What happens in her life? And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? And why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not? More to you than ten sons. And they had eaten and drunk in Shiloh. Hannah rose. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give to your servant a son, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. She's in this temple, and she's praying to God. If we read further in this passage, where the priest is looking upon her, and she's sitting and she's talking to God very softly, and while her lips are moving, he he thinks she is drunk with wine and he says, are you drunk? Have you been drinking? You must let go of the wine. And then she answers. She says, no, I am in distress. We read this in verse 17 to 20. Read further. He says, then Eli answered, go in peace and the God of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him. And she said, let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah, and Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife. And the Lord remembered her, and in due time Hannah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Samuel, for she said, I have asked for him from the Lord. God hears her cry. The other woman in this household, Penina, teases her and she is taunting her because she doesn't have children. Her husband, Elkanah, sees this and he says, am I not worth more than 10 sons to you? But she cries out to the Lord. Three things we, we can take from this narrative, this story in the Bible. The first thing is, be persistent in prayer. Hannah didn't stop praying and asking God for a son 
until God heard her prayer. God knew what was in her heart. God knew the anguish she had because she was bitterly weeping before him. God was aware long before he asked her. But she kept on continually praying. We read this in 1 Samuel 1 12. She kept on praying. Verse 15. She poured her soul before the Lord. The New Testament says, you don't have because you do not ask. There's so many desires in your heart that you have. Today, I want to encourage you, be like Hannah. Be persistent in prayer. Pray to the Lord. Find a place where you can sit and cry out and call out to the Lord to hear your prayers. In this week, I had a little incident. I couldn't find my keys anywhere. And one of my team members prayed with me over the phone. And we asked the Lord, please, Lord, help. I couldn't find my car keys and the remote for the house um, and my wallet. And just after we prayed, I was walking around and God helped me. And I remember where I put them away. I was on the phone speaking to my sister from Australia. And in the talking, I put it down somewhere and I forgot about it. And God heard my prayer. Even simple little prayers like that. But with in this instance, we see how she was persistent. Going to the temple of the Lord, crying out to God and calling on His name. Sometimes you might feel like God has abandoned you. Like in the story. Her womb was closed up. She couldn't have children. But keep praying. Be persistent. The second thing we learn is to surrender everything we have before the Lord. When you cry out to God, you should surrender everything. Place your situation, the troubles you have, place it in God's hands. Your children, your marriage. Your whole life. 1 Samuel 6, or 1 verse 16 states, it says, I have been praying here out of great anguish and grief. She was honest with God. She was giving everything to Him. God, I have anguish. God, I have grief. You can tell God, Lord, I'm broken inside. My heart is saddened. Be open towards God and put everything in His hands. Surrender everything to God. He knows your deepest desires, but we need to call out to Him. God is near to those who call out on His name. The promises right through Scripture, especially in Psalms, call on the name of the Lord and He will hear you. Surrender everything. When you feel weak, say, God, I'm weak. When you feel broken, God, I'm broken. Maybe today on this Mother's Day, you miss your mother. She's not with you anymore. You're crying to the Lord. Lord, pre please be near to me. God will hear. He knows your heart's desires. And here's the promise. God's Holy Spirit helps us in our deepest needs. Romans 8 verse 26. He helps us in our weakness. What a promise we have of God. He is our helper. God sent His Holy Spirit to help us. When we surrender, when we pray, He helps us. The third thing that we learn from the story is Hannah remembers God's faithfulness. And this now happens in chapter 2. We read where she starts singing praises to the Lord. I encourage you that when you pray and when you call out to God and when He answers you, to share that with your family. Confess what the Lord has done in your lives. Tell people what He has done. Tell people how God has been faithful and heard your prayers. Sing to the Lord. Pray to God with thanksgiving. Now she comes and she knows that God hears her. She knows that God heard her promise. And now she sings praises to God. Read with me. Uh, 1 Samuel 2 verse 1 and 2. 1 Samuel 2 verse 1 to 2. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. That's her honor, her glory. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like the Lord. For there is none besides you. There is no rock 
like our God. Cry out to God. Know that He will hear your prayers. Be, be persistent in your prayers. Keep on praying without ceasing until God answers your prayers. Pour out your heart before Him. Number two, surrender all before God. Tell Him how you feel. Speak out your emotions before the Lord. And then lastly, when God answers your prayers, celebrate it. Bring glory and praise to Him. Testify to others around you what God has done so that they would learn that God hears our cries and our prayers. During these trying times, we can encourage others by teaching them to pray and crying out to God and remembering God's faithfulness in your life and in my life. And we read this all through Scripture where people cried out to God and God answered their prayers. What a wonderful promise. God still hears your prayers and God still hears when you cry out to Him. Let's pray together. Lord, sometimes we go for many days without praying. And prayer is like the spiritual oxygen. We starve ourselves. And then we open the door and then we, <gasps> we suck in this prayer. This presence of your spirit as we pray. And Lord, but let us live in your presence. Let us continually pray in the mornings while we work. Make time in between. Cry out to you. Persist in prayer until you hear and answer our prayers. Thank you, Lord, that we know uh, your promise is true. In the same way you heard the prayer and, and answered the prayer of Hannah, you hear our prayers. And then, she brings the gift of the son that God blessed her with. She brings him and dedicates him to the Lord. May we bring our children to God. We pray for them, Lord. But our prayer today is for our children. Fill them with your spirit, O God. This is our greatest prayer. Save them, Lord, and fill them with your spirit. We thank you for the gift of your love, the gift of eternal life, but also the gift of prayer that we can talk to you and you hear our prayers. Bless us in this day and this week that lies ahead. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord be with you and may you grow in your prayer life as well. And as you cry out to God, may He hear and answer your prayers. The Lord bless you.